Hi everyone, it's Talia from Zart Art and today I'm going to be showing you how to create bubble printed micro worlds. So here I have a little example of what we'll be creating. So as you can see, these coloured spots here are created from a bubble print and then we've drawn over the top to create our micro world. So our micro world is representative of bacteria. Bacteria is all around us and you can see it under a microscope. So this could be a really great link to a science lesson as well. So to begin, we're going to set up our area and create some bubble prints. So here I've just created a few different bubble prints. You can use single colors or you can combine colors together and create multiple colors in the one print. What you will need is a small bowl or a small cup. I'm going to use two different sizes of a bowl and a cup so you can see the difference between how large the bubbles will be when you create them. I've got a little jug of water here that has some hand soap. So just two or three squirts of hand soap should be enough. You just need enough of the soap mixed with the water to create bubbles. So I'm going to pour it into my two vessels and then add a color or a pigment to them. I'm using acrylic paint, but you could also use ink or watercolor or food dye will work as well. So depending on how vibrant you want your colors, you might want to add a little bit more paint or dye to the water ratio, but I'm just going to do a test and add a little bit of paint. And mix it in thoroughly with your water. If you are using acrylic paint mixed with water, you'll have to mix it much more than you would with food dye. And I will be using two colors in this print. So I'll be using a blue and a red. My yellow might be a little bit too light to see well on the camera. So just have a think about what colors you're using and how much pigment you do need to add. So if you did want to use a yellow, you'd probably have to add in a lot more than you would a blue or a red. Okay. Now you've got your color mixed with your water and your soap using a straw and having some paper close by. This is just a 130 GSM cartridge. We're going to blow some bubbles. So as you can see, you might get a little bit messy, but this will easily wash off, especially if there's soap. So what you wanna do in your container is blow some bubbles so they're sitting on the surface and then press your paper down and have a look and see what the pigment is like. So as you can see, that's very light, which means I need to add more pigment. So I'm going to add more paint to this and I'll probably need to add more paint to my other one to make sure that we can see those bubbles nice and easily. So as you can see, I've added a bit more paint to my mixture and you can see those bubbles much more clearly than what you could before. So do a few test runs to make sure you have your mixing done correctly. Now, what I'm going to do is continue this process. So blowing bubbles in my little receptacles and then pressing paper on the top. What I don't wanna do is cover my whole page completely. I just want sections of bubbles. So just try and think about where you're pressing your paper to create those bubble areas. So as I'm blowing my bubbles, I'll press my paper down and then re-blow the bubbles and alternate between my colors.
now we've got our bubble print, so we haven't filled out the whole area, just some small sections, and you will need to embrace the mess a little bit with this project, so you can just lay newspaper on your table if you can't be bothered wiping it down. So I'm just going to wipe off the excess bubbles and paint, and then we'll move on to our next step. So now I've finished my bubble print. It will take a little while to dry, only a few minutes or you could hair dry it, but I've got some of these prints that have already been made, so I'm just going to use a dry one to draw over. So when you're creating your drawings, I am going to use yeah, these Unipin fine liners. I'm only gonna use one color and I'll use this lighter gray. And the only reason that I'm using a light gray fine liner as opposed to a black fine liner, which is this, is just because I don't like the amount of contrast that I'm creating. So I want just a nice lighter tone to work in with my bubbles so it's not as harsh, but of course you can use a black fine liner if that is all you have. Now looking at bacteria, if you were doing this as a science project, then I would recommend using a microscope with your kids to look at the different shapes. And bacteria have all different shapes, they have different lines, they create different patterns. So maybe have a look at some pictures or if you do have access to microscopes, have a look through those and discuss the shapes and patterns you can see. So using my fine liner, I'm going to look into my bubble prints and see some of those shapes that have been created already from the bubbles. And then I'm going to outline them and change them a little bit with the lines I'm creating with my fine liner. Now I've finished drawing in some of my little bacteria shapes, so you don't need to fill out your whole page. You can just pick and choose some areas to go over and add some details to. But like I said, if you can link it to a science lesson, then it's a really great link between art and science and exploring bacteria and talking about all the things related to those in an art sense as well, such as the shapes, colors, and lines that you'd be using. But otherwise, this can be a really fun activity to practice some skills with drawing, as well as learning how to do bubble print technique for year levels probably around junior primary to middle primary or if you want to extend the drawing task and really look at those fine details then definitely senior primary students would enjoy this activity as well thanks for watching and we'll see you next time